We had the first glimpse of this deep cool cooler back in Computex 2023 and it is actually available now locally so I reached out to Deepcool so they could send us one and for me to test and compare it against the different CPU coolers that I have tested from before. Hello and welcome back again to Junkyard Summit and today we have one of Deepcool's newer air coolers under their AK Tower Heatsink lineup with the AK400 Digital. This is pretty similar with their older AK400 Tower Heatsink but with an added feature of allowing you to see CPU temps or utilization in real time. Right now, the AK400 Digital ranges from around 2,300 Philippine Peso to around 2,500 Philippine Peso and that is roughly around 1,000 Pesos more as compared to the non-digital one. So basically, you are paying a little bit of premium for the said digital screen. It also comes in two colors, black or white, and the fan included doesn't have any LED with it. Going back to the actual cooler, the AK400 Digital is a tower-style heatsink with a height of 156mm and 97mm wide. This is still fairly a small CPU cooler, so you shouldn't have any problems when installing this, uh, whether on an ATX case or an MATX case. And... You shouldn't have any compatibility issues as well with RAM clearance or even hitting those chunkier VRM heat sinks. It has four copper heat pipes that directly touches the CPU for faster heat transfer and is spread it out to its aluminum fins. Weight is around 695 grams. This includes the fans attached to it and rated TDP support of this one is at 220 watts and Actually, I have my fair share of experience with the AK400 and I could tell you that my 12700K runs perfectly fine even with unlocked power limits. The included fan in the AK400 Digital is their FK120 which is an FDB fan and Deepcool uses this fan across most of their premium coolers and it has a max rated fan speed of 1850 RPM and an airflow of 69 CFM. Included accessories is pretty straightforward too with screws, standoffs, and mounting plates for both Intel and AMD CPUs. Older AM3, LGA775, and older CPUs are not supported anymore so you might consider other options if you plan to replace your older CPU cooler. There's also an extra set of retention clips included if you prefer to add another fan to this heatsink. Thermal paste is also pre-applied and unfortunately, you need to buy a new one if ever if you need to remount it or move it to a different system. Installation is pretty easy as all you need to do is replace the backplate if you are using an Intel CPU and if you are coming from an AMD system, you just need to remove the existing stock bracket and mount the included plate and standoffs depending on your platform. Then finally, just screw it down slowly and in an alternating fashion. Moving on to the start of the show, the digital display. The screen shows real-time status of parameters including CPU temps and usages. It can also throw in a visual warning if the system reaches high temperatures. All of these can be set by plugging its USB 2.0 header and controlling it via its simple app. The software setup is pretty straightforward. Just download it from the product page, then extract install, and finally restart your computer for it to appear. By the way, you don't need to plug in the ARGB cable to use it and the cable is actually for the RGB strip giving it a subtle glow and for an added extra layer of personal flair. Today's test system is similar to my previous CPU cooler testing and this includes my Ryzen 5 5600 CPU under two fan speed and two parameters. One is at predefined clocks and voltages while the other one would be enabling PBO. All testings are also done in an open test bench, so expect higher temps as compared to my results. And with that out of the way, let us check some results. Temps as compared stock AMD rate coolers are night and day. We didn't get any throttling from the CPU, even with PBO. It peaked at 82.5 degrees Celsius with 100% fan speed, while a really small increase in temperature when the fan is set to a lower 50% fan speed. Results from a normalized voltage and clocks kept this cooler on top as well as compared to previously tested low-profile coolers. We also didn't see any performance drops as compared to other coolers, which is a big plus for the AK400 Digital. Noise-wise, the FK120 is an excellent fan as even at 100% fan speed, 
It is within tolerable noise range and you don't even need to push it aggressively as performance is still fantastic even at lower RPM. And for my final thoughts, the older AK400 is already a fantastic entry-level CPU cooler and this version with digital display also gets my recommendation in terms of cooling, especially for those users with mid-range systems. And personally, I think that the LCD screen is not a gimmick and actually has its uses, but I also do think that the extra 1,000 Philippine Peso is a little bit too steep, especially for users in this price segment, which values performance as compared to other features. Hopefully, we could get more customizability if ever there's gonna be like a version 2 of this one. Maybe we can add similar to what Asus did with the dot matrix LED feature on their Zephyrus G14 laptop. So that is all for today. What are your thoughts on Deepcool's digital screen? Is it a gimmick or does it actually have its use? Comment it down below and if you find this video helpful, go hit that like button and also do subscribe to my channel if you want to see more CPU cooler reviews like this one. Once again, this is Brain of Junkyard Summit. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.